said, what? They said, man, you see how many tables we can... I said, who, who, be, who be serving this wonderful number? The deaconesses got it together. I said, man, you know that's sweet. And I saw as Joe walked away, because there was nobody there, and I saw it. Women dressed in white, bumping into each other, holding platters of food and serving and setting it out. I saw deacons down there making sure that everything was right because the word was preached in the main room, but now the celebration was going to take place in the other room. I saw the servants doing what they're supposed to do and the church growing and the church being multiplied because everybody knew what they were supposed to do. I saw in my mind's eye no fussing, no bickering, every, I mean every dish just right, the coffee just right. I didn't see a man fiddling around there because we don't know what we're doing. We just in the way. But I saw women in the church doing what they're supposed to do and not being ashamed of it. Now you got these young women, they don't want to do that. I don't want to get in no kitchen. I want to be on the main line. I'm not going to go there, but oh yes I am. Go to Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. Titus, see this isn't in the outline, but go to Titus chapter 2. And Titus chapter 2, and what we're going to do is I want you to look at verses 2 and 3. Titus chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. Yeah, that's just like South Central. We got ambulances too. Wonderful. I'm at home. Older women are to be temperate, dignified, sensible, sound in the faith and in love, in perseverance, Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in their behavior, not malicious gossips, nor enslaved to much wine, teaching what is good, that they may encourage the young women to love their husbands, to love their children. You know we need that in our homes today. We need older women to say, man, uh, honey, love that man. He ain't treat, love him. Love him. I know he ain't treating you right, sweetheart. Love him. He needs love. Especially if he's a black man or a minority. Don't nobody love him. Love him, young woman. When he go to work, the boss don't love him. Other folk don't love the man. And then it goes on, it says, and then it says to be, uh, I love this. To be sensible, teaching the young women to be sensible, pure, workers at home, kind, being subject to their own husbands, not to the preacher, to your own husband. Don't be walking around here following no preacher. These women in Olivet, don't be coming to me and not coming to their husbands because the husbands will knock me out. See? So you young women at Calvary, don't be coming to Joe, you go to your husband. And then Joe will counsel you and your husband to their own husbands that the word of God may not be dishonored. Yeah. Now the problem in the church today with our young women is that well, I don't want to follow what that old woman said. That old woman is all old fashioned. All she's thinking about doing is caring for that man and caring for these people in the church and I want to have some fun. Verse 2 and 4 that we read said in the entire body in the book of Acts that we read it was called to get involved in the selection of these special individuals. Calvary in the future when you have to choose a deacon or a deaconess look for those qualities. Look for those qualities because I'm going to tell you they can drive up here with a Mercedes and they can get out and flash a diamond cluster in your eye. <laughs> I just look at them and say what's this? You know, Bozo the Clown, what does that mean? I'll, hey, look at my wedding ring. Look at that one. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That doesn't mean anything. You look for the biblical qualities. The entire body is called to get involved. Verse 5 in that verse tells us that the statement made by the pastor pleased the congregants to point to their acting on what they heard. See, Calvary and all of it, it is your responsibility. If you're going to celebrate spiritual leadership, it is definitely your responsibility to get involved with all of that. This statement pleased the regular congregants. And the result? 
the result is whenever one does the will of the Lord, there is always a vivid spiritual result. And you saw that in verse 7 because it says that people were being brought to the Lord. Because of the right kind of leadership, the preached word began to take effect on the community as a whole. Calvary, you celebrate your deacons and deaconesses and so that Santa Monica can see that you're just more than a building with beautiful stained glass, Amen. that they can take comfort and come and learn under the word of God. Amen. People were getting saved because of the right kind of leadership. Even the leaders of other faiths began to respond to the wholesome teachings of the scriptures. We saw in verse 7 that some of the priests came. And so what you're going to do with the right kind of deacon and deaconess board is you're going to get some folk from other churches. You're going to get some Episcopalians coming over here celebrating with you. You're going to get some Methodists coming over here celebrating with you. You're going to get some other Baptists coming over here to see the way it's done. And let me, hey, look, look, love is the key. Love is the key. If Calvary's leadership loves, don't worry about other pastors that don't love. You love and love will supersede anything. See, if it's, y'all know me well enough to know that I'm not concerned about whether somebody loved me in some other church. Because God's not judging me for whether they love me. He's judging me for whether I love them. So I go, see, Calvary, I love you. Now, if there's one person in this room, even from Olivet, that don't love me, you got a problem, I don't. Because I love you immensely and going to do that forever. And I'm going to tell you, love is what draws the power of God in the church. Indifference and separation drives the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit don't want to abide in no confusion. Let me come to the conclusion. Calvary is one of the many churches in the community of believers that has learned the benefit of godly leadership. I just want to ask you to celebrate with me. Secondly, Olivet and Calvary can with an open heart face the fact that this kind of relationship through celebration is difficult to attain without the assistance of the Holy Spirit. In other words, we, you can't have fellowship with me and I can't have fellowship with you unless God is drawing and pulling us together. And third and lastly, many within the hearing of my voice must come, in, come into contact with this kind of godly leadership as they become willing to see the need, the need to incorporate the same identity within your church for growth and development. Hold on to a deacon board that's going to hold on to the word. Encourage a deaconess board that is going to get up and do the work repeatedly. Don't listen to people that would encourage you to dump a board that has done something in the past when you haven't seen nothing in the present. And look out amongst you like these first century Christians did and become the judge of whether folk are ready for this kind of leadership position as they put out their arm and say, put a towel on it and let me serve a good time until you see that I've proven myself faithful as a servant of our law. That gives me all the cause in the world to celebrate godly leadership. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the Bible showing us and telling us through the beloved pen of the apostles, especially Paul, for when you told him to ordain elders in every city, we also see the role in the positions of leaders such as deacons and deaconesses. Yes, oh, we know, Heavenly Father, that in the 20th century church, that role has become something strange. But we celebrate the biblical model that you've given us. We thank you for every deacon in this church that has given their lives, their substance, their prayers, and their concerns for the growth of Calvary. 
And we pray that you might continue to use these very lives as they incorporate this wisdom into younger men who need to follow suit. 